Welcome to NASA's Summer of Innovation Professional Development videos. I'm Julie Muffler with NASA's Aerospace Education Services Project. This video focuses on the Reaping Rocks activity from the Earth Space Science theme created for grades 7 through 9. The Earth's Attic lesson includes four activities. Regular formation, Reaping Rocks, Moon Math, and Lava Layering. The focus of this video is Reaping Rocks. During the Apollo missions, there were 842 pounds, 382 kilograms, of lunar rocks collected and brought back to Earth. Pictured here are astronaut Gene Cernan drilling a core sample, astronaut Harrison Schmidt collecting samples, and finally a tray of lunar rocks in the Lunar Sample Laboratory facility at Johnson Space Center. In the Reaping Rocks activity, the students will collect rocks from around the school's neighborhood or from home and apply their observations to predict what rocks might be found on the moon. Pictured here is the first page of the activity. It provides background and lists key concepts. Challenge your students to collect as many different rocks that they can from around their neighborhood. Take the students on a walk around the school grounds and neighboring areas to collect rocks. Make it an adventure. The background information in the educator's guide provides short definitions of the terms used in the activity as well as basic information about lunar geology. Pictured here are examples of the classifications the students will use in identifying their rocks they've collected. Igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. As the students bring in the rocks, set up a display area for each. It may look something like this. The rock display should include the student's name and location where the rock was found. The student sheets provide the procedures. Have each student complete the student page, my own rock chart. Number one, look at each rock with and without a hand lens. Number two, use as many adjectives as you can to complete the chart. Number three, classify your rocks as igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. And number four, interpret how your rocks were formed, their origin. Now that the students have made their observations and classified their rocks, they will work in groups to predict which rock types might be found on the moon and which might not. You may borrow lunar rock sample disk from NASA. Here is Bonnie Murray, our NASA education specialist, to tell us more about this exciting opportunity. So Bonnie, what do the rocks look like? The samples that you will receive are segments or pieces of actual moon rocks brought back to Earth by the Apollo astronauts. They've been handled and stored in environmentally controlled conditions and are encased in a protective lucite disc. The lucite can become scratched, so you will want to handle the disc carefully. You'll receive two discs, one containing lunar samples mm -hmm. and another containing meteorite samples. Now remember, there's a lesson on the Summer of Innovation website on meteorites. This would be a wonderful source of activities to use with these samples. It would. That would be great. You can also ask for some lunar soil simulant to be sent to you when you put in your request for lunar and meteorite samples. A great activity to do with the simulant is to allow students to make their own slides containing a small amount of simulant. As a teacher, how would I get these samples? You need to be an educator. In order to get the samples, you need to be an educator, and you need to be working in either a K-12 classroom mm -hmm. or a library or a science center. Okay. And from there, you'll need to find out where a course is being offered. Educators may be certified to borrow lunar and meteorite sample disks by completing a training course conducted by an authorized certifier. Okay. The course will cover sample education disk security, appropriate content, including suggested activities and themes, to help you plan for the most effective use of the discs. At the conclusion of the training, you'll be given a certificate as a documentation of your certification. The email that you will need to begin the sample disc loan process is printed on the certificate, so you'll have it there for future reference. That's good. Mm -hmm. There are three ways to find out about upcoming trainings. First, I would recommend you check the NEON site. Mm -hmm. That's also a great place to check for professional development opportunities in general. Second, you can request training through the AESP website. Okay. And another option is to contact the ERC in your region. There are 10 NASA centers across the country, and each one has at least, and each has one ERC associated with it. It's possible for the training to be completed through distance learning as well if a certified educator is available to be present during the training. 
Well, thank you, Bonnie, for providing us with that information. You're welcome, Julie. I hope that you'll enjoy using these national treasures with the students. Sure, we will. Teachers are required to attend a lunar certification workshop before they can borrow the moon rocks. This workshop is offered by NASA's Aerospace Education Services Project. You may request a workshop by visiting the AESP website. Often, there are lunar certification workshops offered at the NASA centers. Here's a map showing the NASA centers. This link is also on the AESP website. Thank you for joining us as we explore together in NASA's Summer of Innovation.